Hey, welcome back to another episode of Camp and Camera. Today, we're going to watch the Blue Angels fly. Hey, welcome back, everyone. We're still down here at Gulf State Park, just outside of Orange Beach, Alabama, down here in the Gulf Shores area. Just a beautiful, beautiful day, blue sunshine. Um, hey, looking around on the internet, I realized that the Blue Angels, uh, you know their home base is just east of here in Pensacola. Um, they do practice sessions for their air show on Tuesday and Wednesday mornings. Um, so I'm gonna go down to Pensacola and check out one of the practice sessions. Now, as I understand, it doesn't cost anything to get in. It's, it's free, they've got bleachers set up. Uh, for about a thousand people so you can watch the practice session. Joanne's going to hang out at the camper and just read and do some relaxing and I'm going to go watch some airplanes fly. So let's go check this out. So that's not the first time that I've seen the Blue Angels, but it is the first time I've seen it at their home base in Pensacola. Wow, what a show. Beautiful weather, light winds, and airplanes everywhere. This is just awesome. It sure gets me stoked up, ready for the flying season coming up. So yeah, if you have a chance to catch a practice session down in Pensacola, definitely, definitely show up. And you can't beat the price of free. It's hard to beat too. So wow, let's walk out this, uh, this ramp full of, of historic aircraft and head back towards the campground. This is a CH-37C Mojave. I didn't even know that was a thing. That, uh, wow, that's a huge helicopter. So check out this. This is a 1940 PBY Catalina. Wow, what a, what a beautiful airplane. They just don't make them like this anymore. Gorgeous. And this is a retired F-18 uh, Blue Angels jet on a static display at the end of the flight line. What a beautiful airplane. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, we are finally back in the workshop. Uh, if you watched last episode, we took a week vacation down to uh, Gulf Shores, Alabama, stayed at the Gulf State Park Campground. And hey, how cool was that, being able to watch the Blue Angels practice at their home field? I'm a real airplane enthusiast, and it was awesome being able to see that. Beautiful weather, too, by the way. Um, but hey, we're back in the workshop now. Going to pick back up on the build of the Camp Easy 5945 teardrop. Um, in the last episode where we were building, which was episode before last, um, we were working on the lights, and we're going to continue with that again today. Um, one thing that I can't, I don't think I showed, but I do want to talk about quickly. I originally thought about running one ground wire from the back of the camper all the way around the front and then tying all the lights into that. And I ended up running a, I'm going to call it an individual pigtail from each light directly to the frame. So every light on the camper has its own ground wire going to the frame. Um, the reason I did that is I have owned and I have seen many trailers over the years be plagued with light issues. And I would say 
probably 75 to 80 percent uh, of those have, have been something to do with a poor ground and I don't want to have that problem with this camper so I, I, I put an individual ground to each light on the camper so if I have an issue it's only going to affect one light and it shouldn't take much to get it uh, fixed and back on the road um, but in today's video I'm going to pick back up wiring in the third brake light now one thing I didn't realize and it's poor planning on my part but I put the third brake light on the galley hatch and that's a good thing I think it's going to help with safety and visibility to the people behind me on the road but the bad thing is there's there's nowhere in the existing uh, wiring diagram to tie it into where to work appropriately and what I mean is that if I tied the third brake light into let's say the left turn signal in brake light um, it would flash whenever the left turn signal was flashing instead of staying solid when the brake was applied uh, vice versa on the right side if you hit the hit the turn signal the the light would flash and I don't want that I just want to stay on and steady whenever the brake pedal is hit and to turn off when the brake pedals let off so I had to get creative and was trying to think of ways I could wire that in and I got lucky I ran across this converter on the internet see if you can see this it's made by the Kurt company and there are others also out there I think to Concha to Concha, however you say that makes one uh, they make a lot of towing accessories but this one's made by Kurt and basically the input side has three wires um, this will come from normally it will come from the vehicle and this green wire is the right side stop and turn the white wire is the ground the yellow wire is the left side stop and turn so it basically takes combination stop and, and, and turn lights and it splits those into individual turn and stop lights so on the output side the green wire is the right turn the yellow wire is the left turn and the red wire is only stop it doesn't do anything else so my plan is to take the input wires tie those into my seven pin junction box on the front of the camper frame take the green wire and yellow wire and just roll them up not use them put them out of the way because I already have functioning uh, stop and turn lights on either side so I don't need those but I am going to take the red wire and run that straight back to the third brake light now I haven't tried this yet in theory it's going to work um, if it doesn't I may just have to make a <laughs> bloopers video and you all can throw some comments at me um, but hey let's get started putting this on so on the back side of the frame where I put the junction box on I'm just going to take some alcohol on a cloth and clean it up and then the converter has a self-adhesive uh, tape on the back and I'll just stick it on the back of the frame I'll come back later to see you know how well it's stuck if it, uh, it's not great then I may put some fasteners on there of some kind but I'll just put it there and uh, start running the wires. So there's the converter. Uh, it's on the back of the frame with self-adhesive tape. The input side um, will come right around with these other wires and go into the junction box. It'll be a nice routing for it. And then the output side will just follow the frame back to the third brake light. So after I put the Kurt tail light converter on the inside of the frame, I ran the red wire around the perimeter of the frame back to the third tail light that's on the galley. Um, and now that that's on there, I'm ready to uh, wire up the input wires into the tail light converter into the seven pin harness in the front. And actually it's time to wire all of the lights into the seven pin harness. So let's get started on that. So I'm working in the junction box now. And one thing I found that's a little disconcerting I can work around it, but I'm not real happy about it, is that when you pull these um, quarter inch uh, eye terminations off these studs, um, these studs are marked underneath as to what they're for. The one that had the brown wire on it, on the top of this plastic, it says brown, so it you know, tells you what color it is. And on the bottom, it says right, stop, and turn. So that tells me that the um, the brake and, and uh, turn signal light from the right side of the camper 
will go on to this brown stud. Now, what's disconcerting is that it's a green wire, um, which is standard on on trailers. It's a green wire coming from the right hand side. So I'll have to put a green wire on the brown stud. So I'm going to have to be real careful to uh, not get the colors mixed up. So I'm going to go ahead and run the green wire to this brown stud. And one thing I'm going to do is pull the green wire, I don't want to say taut, but just kind of pull the slack out of it underneath the camper, uh, underneath the camper frame. And then I'm going to run it through this little inlet in the junction box and run it up to this brown stud. And I'm going to mark that with my finger. And I'm going to come over here just a couple inches. And this is where I'm going to cut the wire. That way, if something happens that there's some, you know, miss color coding or whatnot on anything and it doesn't work I can always pop this up and I've got enough room to move it to any other stud on this bar that I need to so now I'm going to split these wires again one is the right stop and turn light and the other is the running lights and I'm just going to spread them far enough where they can reach the different uh, sections here in the junction box I'm going to strip back a little of the wire, just twist it, and then I'm going to put on some of these eye terminations here. So I'll be putting this, let me make sure it's going to fit over the stud first. Yeah, it's going to fit just fine. So I'm going to put this in there and crimp it with my crimpers. Make sure it's good and snug yep looks good so now I can run this up inside let me tilt the camera up so now I can run this up inside and onto this lug so now that I have the termination on the end of my green wire and I have that on the stud it will be a good time for me to run the green wire from the Kurt tail light converter um, to the same stud again. This is going to be coming from the input side of the tail light converter And it'll be using that to convert part of that signal into a third brake light So I'm going to do the same as I did before I'm just going to run it around kind of mock up where it would go Pull out a couple inches of slack and here's where I'll cut it Okay, those appear to be pretty tight, pretty snug.